and how you want to be proactive with your life is, 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 is your, it's only your choice. It's your, it's your gift. It's why you were chosen. I think that's how it works. It's why you were chosen. But truly, it starts back from the very beginning because the self-identity crisis has to be approached through tradition. You have to set that example for your children. You have to be a role model. Every day of my life, every day of my life, even to this very day, my mother calls me and says, I love you. I love you. The power of love is strong. It made an Indian become a Jew. <laughs> the power of love is strong. So strong, it makes you delusional. <laughs> Very delusional. <laughs> but there's a reason why it all happens. And it wasn't my choice. It was God's choice. Uh, my grandfather was right. I became educated. I'm a college graduate. I took a degree that I thought, because I was, you know, party animal, high school kid, woo, I'm gonna go, I got in college, you know, but I really didn't want to study. I just wanted, I just wanted to get out of my house. I wanted to escape because I needed to get out of my house. It was unhealthy. So I used education to do that. And um, I took a degree in a, in, a, in a major called speech communication. And I was like, this is an easy one. No math, no science. I can skate through this and party. And the reality was, it was my blessing. Because look at what I'm doing to you today. This is what my degree in college is. And I never imagined that God would put that into my, into my until now. I just, re, I just, you know, I just reconnected and I realized he's been looking out for me since the first minute I saved my mother's life. He's been looking out for me my whole life. He saved me so many times. So when I got to this point where I said, I'm not gonna do this anymore, he gave me Papa so that I could be reborn and start over. And truly, I'm blessed. And I wake up every day and I say, I am blessed and thankful. Jim, we said it this morning, and we said it yesterday morning. I love my life. I am at peace. I want you all to be at peace. I wish that for every set of eyes looking at me right now. I want you to wake up every morning and be at peace. Because that's the only way you're going to be a good role model for everybody around you. And everything, each and every, everything each and every one of you do affects someone around you. And you have to be conscious of it. Being conscious will reestablish a moral platform. Being conscious will give you the reason to love. I don't live my life anymore for myself. I live my life for you. I live my life, I've been chosen, I've been chosen to take a 79 year old man around the world to speak. Where's the job application and where did it, it's not a Craig, it's not Craig's, not on Craigslist. Wanted, warrior for chief. I'm of service, I'm in awe when he says thank you to me. I, I, I don't want to be thanked. I'm honored and privileged and so overwhelmed with the blessing that God has given me. He has given me back something that I never had. Saginaw is the first man in my life to accept me and accept the value of who I am. I'm 45 years old and I was, this is the first man in my whole life to tell me I was valuable. It's empowering. This is why. This is why I've chosen this path. His 
this beautiful platform of past and future is what life's about. It's full circle. We all are going to come full circle in our lives. It's only up to you as to how you get there. And you cannot complete the circle until you accept the fact that there is a power greater than you. And like my mom said, when you find that place, you are now touching the hand of God. Empowering us. Can I say that you guys have been rickified? <laughs> yeah, God, love it, I love it. Sweetens, where are we on time? Okay, well, um, I wanna throw down a couple of questions. We got, we're gonna throw down on a couple of questions. Um, Okay, so now you've been Saginaw and Rick. <laughs> Actually, um, Rick was talking about the, the interview he did this week. Um, the, the title of it was Rick and Roll, and it's the, a blog that he wrote for the Huffington Post. So do you want to know even more about this man and his transformation? It's incredibly brave. Um, and so I know Saginaw says not to spend too much time at the keys, but if you are doing it, Google the article. Uh, so who has a question? Someone's got to, yes, Lola. Lola. You guys met earlier in the week. Lola. Lola's from Corey Radio. Look, I'm really pleased because I was hoping, I knew you didn't dance. <laughs> and you know the great thing about it is that you got to dance on the people of the oldest, continuous peoples of the world. And I hope you always remember that. That's priceless. And thank you, because I just knew it. And I was hoping that it was going to happen, but I didn't realise how quickly it was going to happen. So, thank you very much. Oh, Lola. You put it out there. That's what happens. <laughs> Remember, if you want to achieve something, put it out there. That's the beginning. Put it out there. And can we see that in the next video? <clears throat> the next video of, of the groove? You want my, of my groove thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure at some point it'll pop up. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just really pleased that it, it's happened. Yes, it did. It thank happened. You. It's transformational and it happened here. Great. Well, thanks. And, and Lolo, actually, Rick said the other day it was because he watched the Indigenous male dancers in our opening ceremony yesterday. It was so powerful. It was incredible. We'd seen them before and they were great. We'd and seen then, them three times. And then this, this one was just, this, this performance we saw was just, oh man, it was. It was I'm powerful. Speechless. I'm speechless. Um, also, too, just to um, say that um, with our people, with grassroots people and people who live, and breathe our people. We prefer the term Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders. Also to, if um, because of stolen generation, there are a lot of people that don't know who they're coming from and they're still searching mm -hmm. for their families. Or people identify with their language groups here. Um, we've always found that the, the wider community and the government have always changed names and given us words. And this is the latest word where they put us all in one basket. You know, we are made up of over 500 nations in this country, and we still have a lot of those nations. There's people still practicing ceremony, singing, lang you know, speaking languages, and carrying on the traditions. So um, I think it's really important that, that people, when they come here, that they know that we are, and always will be, Aboriginal mm. and Torres Strait Islander people, or as our people know, we were Rajuri, <coughs> Milleroy, um, Yurubara, there's so many different language groups here and people need to find out. People know about Native Americans more so than they know about us. And they embrace your culture more than they embrace our culture. And I thank you for coming here and first of all making the connection <coughs> with our peoples, with the many different nations that you've actually met in Sydney, because a lot of us here are refugees from many other nations within this continent that have been removed from family, from culture, from traditions. But as we come to the cities, we all start to reconnect and find our way back to our people, whether, whether it's in a, in a different land, but this is, this is the, the issue we have today, that so many of our people are refugees and have been moved around this country so much and people are still trying to find 
their, their families and their, their connections. I feel, I feel you, Lola. I feel you. I'm going to hope that your applications don't say other as well. Um, no, we does have Aboriginal there. Perfect. At least Aboriginal. you can identify with something. Yeah. And we're just finally looking to put Australian South Sea Islander there because there was 